All right, we're back. <laughs> it's working. Is it working? Oh my god. It's back in the red. I'm not sure what's going on here. It was working great a minute ago. What's going on? I literally have had it working great and then it just decides to not work great. Oh, 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 I think, I think it's fixing itself. What's up, Chris420? What's up, Tim Miner? What's up, James Melton? Paul Tarchala? Steven Ward? Tim Miner? Dragonair? Art Carmen? Go Mr. Here? What's up, Jesus? What's up, Jack Hobbs? How is everybody doing today? Alrighty, so I gotta go through the whole spiel again. So if you're new around here, uh, if you, this is one of your first How to Airbrush live streams, so um, the link to this image will be down in the description of this video. You can download and use this image for yourself at home so you can follow along with this exercise with me on your own spare time. All I've done is traced it onto a piece of paper, cut it out, and then I used some magnets to stick it onto my steel that I will be painting on today. If you're going to use this on canvas, you can totally use it on canvas. You can use a little bit of spray adhesive to stick it onto your canvas or whatever it is you're going to be working on. You can stick your stencil on there. Now, if you'll notice on the stencil, there's a picture of a whale, which I've cut out and stuck on here. There's also some circles, which I've cut out a few circles. And we're going to use these to create some planet simulations around the whale and some space in the back. What's up, sheep? How's it going? Yeah, yeah. So I think it's better now. I think it's actually better now. It's working good. It's working good, right? Yeah, okay. So yeah, make sure you hit that like button. Share it out if you want. Marco Thompson coming in today. What are those? Are those headphones? Nice. Um, so yeah, all we've done is stuck it on the, the metal here. <clears throat> you could even use like a plotter and use some FPS gold mask if you wanted to and you wanted to mask it on there really good. Uh, you could do that. In this case, I like to use this, and it's a little bit thicker paper that I used. It's not like uh, print paper. I used a little bit thicker paper um, so that when we go and cut this, we have the, both the stencils, and we'll be able to just stick them back on when we need to. But in the meantime, we're going to do the texture that I was talking about for our planets here. So I'm going to take some texture stencils. And here we have a couple of them. And you probably have some different ones. They sell all different kinds. If you don't have some, we sell some at mikesbrush.com. You can go ahead and check those out. Uh, but I know there's lots of companies that sell lots of texture stencils. Make sure you check them all out. Everybody sells different stuff and pick your own flavor. So we're going to go ahead and spray some of this over here. I'm going to start off with some orange today. So yeah, I hope everybody is having a good start to the December month. The month where it's all magic. I hope everybody's doing good. Ready for the holiday season. And all I'm doing is mixing up some Create Text Wicked Pie Roll Orange. And we'll go through the whole list of colors we'll be using today, but I will say what color I'm using when. And we're starting with the Wicked Pie Roll Orange. It's the Wicked Opaque 0082. We're gonna be using Wicked Opaque Opaque Thalo Green 0084. We're gonna be using Wicked Opaque Daylight Blue 0087. We're gonna be using Wicked Bismuth Vanadate Yellow 0081. Wicked Limelight Green, one of my favorite colors of the new Wicked Opaque series is 0085. We're gonna be using Wicked Opaque White. This is 0030. The number on that is like fading out. Uh, and then we're gonna be using some Wicked Black 0002. Um, I believe the Wicked Jet Black is the new opaque block. That'll work as well. So all we're going to do is mix up some of this orange. Make sure to stir it up or shake it up. And get it nice and stirred in. So You think it's a fish? Hey, whales are not fish, man. Whales are not fish! <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so for this first planet over here, right, maybe, I don't know how many planets you decided to make. I'm going to make two planets. I want one on this side. Maybe we'll put the big one over here and the little one over there, right? We're going to start off by filling in what would be the sensor part of the planet, right? And we're just going to kind of use some orange 
It's going to be a, like a dry plant. So I'm going to use some wicked opaque orange. I might want to just put the stencil on there just so I know how big to make it. You see that little, little bit of shade there? Now I know kind of how big to make my planet. So I'm going to lay the base color for the planet down. Bam. Nothing too crazy on that orange. Simple. Right? Now same thing over here. I'm going to put all, just stick this down. Going to want to know how big to go around. But over here on this side, maybe I'm going to take our little bit of our, our hairbrush stencil here. And we're going to just kind of give it in some some texture. Maybe this is like a gas planet. You know, so there's going to be some kind of texture going on in there. Right? And uh, while we're at it, since we have the orange already in here, we're going to kind of just add some orange kind of clouds or nebulas in the background, right? Now, one thing on this exercise that I want to do is we're going to make this whale and we're going to make him look like he's jumping out of a galaxy down here, right? So there's down here. We're going to do the whole painting and then we're going to add kind of a galaxy effect. Kind of, kind of like, so he's jumping out of like a galaxy or something. I think that'll look pretty good. But in the meantime, we're just going to fill in some kind of cloud shapes. You know, you can kind of be random with it. It doesn't have to be precise. Um, and you don't want to do too much because this is just going to be one of the colors. Um, so, but you do want to run it up to the stencil of the whale. This is kind of why I also like to use a little thicker paper, more resistant to the airbrush paint. Um, if you use too thin a paper, it'll get, get all wiggly and crinkly on you. So be careful with that. And that's it, we're just gonna throw some, some nice little nebulas. If you ever just kind of looked at pictures of space, you see kind of like galaxies, nebulas, that kind of stuff. Bam, nothing too crazy there. You can empty out this orange. Fish are friends, not food. <laughs> uh, reminds me of the Tianguis day. Que va llevar... <laughs> what? <laughs> Tianguis. What the hell is a Tianguis? Tian Tianguis? I don't know. Tianguis. So yeah, simple out, just rinsing out the airbrush, getting it ready for the next color. Nothing too crazy here. Right, now we're gonna switch off to some of our green here. The thalo green, the darker green. And we just need a tiny bit. I'm not mixing up huge amounts of paint. I'm just mixing up like little, like I can't even tilt the airbrush. Like it's just a tiny bit of paint. We're not mixing up tons of paint. Just little tiny squirts, you know. Now I know a lot of people like to have them pre-mixed. So if you have them pre-mixed already in a thing, like all you just need is a little bit. You don't need a whole lot. We're not using that whole much. But even a little bit of paint, you know, just spread out over a big area will cover a lot. So it's no big issue here. All right, so now starting off with the su the, the sun. I almost called it a sun just because it's orange. But starting off with this planet down here, I'm just going to take our little texture effect stencil here, and I'm going to swing it, right? So like on, on stencils like this and, and any of the other texture effect stencils you'll find is that you can swing it, right? You don't have to just you don't have to just lay it down and spray. You could lay it down and spray it and kind of move it around, and you get a little bit of a more of like a a texture going on. So that's kind of what I'm going to do here. Just a little bit. Kind of going around. Bam. All right, now it looks like we got something going on. Maybe you want to add a little freehand around it. If you see a pattern, that can see, I kind of see this like pattern kind of sticking out to me. So I'm just going to fight it. Kind of land it on there like it's a landmass or something. The green part of the planet where plants grow, you know. Plants don't grow everywhere on this planet. So, something like that. Don't have to be too complicated. Doesn't have to be too special because it's not gonna be one of the main focal points of the painting, the whale is and the galaxy is. This is just kind of the background, way off in the back, so. Uh, hit the like, boys and girls, yeah, yep. 
Street market in Mexico, what we know is a flea market. Oh, yeah, yeah, I just know flea market. <laughs> the way you started naming the products you were using, it almost sounded like you're selling them. Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to sell you on them, but I know a lot of people are going to ask anyway, what are you using? So I might as well just say, like, I'm using this, this, and this. It kind of sells itself. Same thing on this planet, maybe just a little bit there. Nothing too crazy over here, just kind of to darken up one side, right? Again, just gonna take that little bit of green, whatever we have left after doing those planets. Maybe you just wanna add some green, green tones into your space, right? Because, I mean, anybody could just make a black area and add some stars and that's their space. But I feel like the best versions of space are when there's like colors in the black, right? Like black doesn't just have to be black. Black can be shifted, you know, different tones. So what's your main brush now? I don't, I don't have a, a main brush. Uh, I, like I, I feel like I say this every single video, but um, right now on my four rack right here, which is the main rack that I use, um, I have the Iwata Eclipse HPCS, I have the GSI Creos PS289, I have the Air Cobra, and then I have the Revolution, Iwata Revolution here. <clears throat> a lot of people, well I shouldn't say a lot of people, but I have had at least two people message me and be like, why don't you switch to Revolution for something nicer? And I'm like, what do you mean? I like keeping the Revolution because of its bigger um, spray pattern and uh, its ability to spray a little bit thicker paints. You know, sometimes we don't want to reduce as much. So having that re Revolution just available there, it's just nice, always. Uh, the Air Cobra, kind of for the same reason. I like that airbrush, but the, the needle rake on the airbrush is kind of aggressive. So it's able to spray some, some really nice thicker paints uh, without having to reduce them so much and it still gives you some nice fine precision lines. Same thing with the, I mean, pretty much all these airbrush. I like the Creos because you can get really detailed in with the Creos with some nice reduced paint. Um, so yeah. I kind of, they all have their, their little perks, you know. But, but, one of the things I've been working on in the background, behind the scenes, is uh, this airbrush stand. I have an idea for an airbrush stand, because mainly because I need one, and they all seem to be um, either just not made for enough airbrushes, because I want one to hold at least six to eight airbrushes, and I don't want it to take up a ton of space, and I want it to be kind of light. You know, I just kind of try to meet this criteria. I want it to be easy to fabricate, um, and uh, yeah. So I've been working behind the scenes on something, and hopefully we can get it out to you guys uh, by early next year. I don't know. So, so some of the plans. But. <clears throat> Cobra for sure. The way you said it. Yeah, I like the Cobra. You'll see me use it a lot. So that says something. That says something. But once once I have all the airbrushes going here, the whole thing is going to kind of change a little bit because I'm just going to have them all set up different colors <laughs> like you know like depending on the painting I'm working and uh, we'll be able to just work some really intricate elaborate paintings without having to switch off and stop and clean out the airbrush or nothing like that we'll just be able to just keep going um, and be able to like focus in on an area while moving you know just moving the focus area and completely finishing all the way from start to finish an area and then moving around um, having that whole area done. Uh, kind of more like this is we're kind of just free, free floating the background and kind of doing like that. But imagine we started in one corner and we just started painting like everything in detail and then just moved all the way to the other corner with everything in detail because we already had all the colors, you know, set up and we wouldn't have to switch ever, you know, just, yeah. So anyway, we're going to be using the Daylight Blue. We're, we're thinking about future times. I, I know I'm... I'm, I'm excited for the future. <laughs> so anyway. <clears throat> um, I got the daylight blue loaded up. 
And uh, all we're going to do is down here on this planet, maybe we're going to take in some freehand. Maybe we want to just make it look like there's water on this planet, right? So we're going to add some blue in there. Just a little bit in there. Make sure you bring it out past that, that halo mark that you had done. So this is kind of like an Earth-like planet, but not really like Earth. Just a little bit different, right? It has desert and plant, you know, whatever. I don't want to do any blue on this one, but I am going to bring some blue into the space here. Just to kind of go around our... Ew. Bring it around that planet. All right, and all we're doing is just laying the background in for our black. So we're going to come in with black, right? And black's going to make up the most of the space. But like I said, we can tone the black to different different shades so it's not just black. Black. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to leave the limelight blue loaded up because we're going to come back and we're going to use that. I'm going to grab the Air Cobra now since we were just talking about it. And it's like a really nice airbrush. But yeah, I've been working on a few things um, in the background, in the back, in the shades, in the shadows, away from the eyes, away from the ears. Alright, so we are going to load some black in here. We need enough black, so I'm just going to go ahead and mix up, not a whole ton, but maybe like a half, half of a cup. Gonna make sure it's reduced. Boom. Shake it up. Shake, shake, shake it up. Shamu! Yeah, yeah, it's like that's what we're doing. <laughs> so yeah, I got a I got a few things lined up next year going forward. Hopefully it all plans out. Hopefully it all works out. My plans always seem to just blow up in my face. But you never know, you gotta keep trying, you gotta keep pushing, you gotta keep moving. You never know when lucky you might get, so. Okay, we got our black loaded up. I'm gonna set this aside for a second. Bam. All right, this is this should be dry. It's pretty dry. Gonna just set our cutout, right? Our circle cutout right over that. Bam. Make sure it's you know, if, if you're working on like a canvas or something like that, make sure the edges are stuck really good. You know, make sure it's just on there really nice. And you don't want it to move. So if you're using magnets, make sure your magnets are nice and strong. Yeah. Uh, busy, busy dude. No, I'm not really that busy. But I just, you know, I'm trying to get my ideas out there before, you know, it's too late to not get ideas out there. So, <sighs> all right, now we're at the black. Relax, you've made it this far. And with the black, I kind of just want you to just slowly just kind of mist in those, those dark areas, you know, make sure to leave some, some of the color showing through. And then just, you, you could just fade it off into the edge. You don't have to, Hit create a hard edge. I know every painting needs a super hard edge on the end, especially ones about space. I to just build it up slowly. See, it's kind of just looking like a mess. That's quite all right. And the reason we want to build it up slowly is because maybe stuff starts sticking out to you. Like maybe this edge of this blue right here. It's just like, just hit that little edge. Give it some depth. You see the, the green and the blue right here? Just a little separation right there. And nothing has to be super precise. See how those lines are just fuzzy? Like I said, we're just building in the background. You can already see there. It's kind of taking that little space kind of effect. And you don't always have to just lay in black. You know, sometimes you can just lay in some colors just nice and nice and easy, you know, nice and carefully. 
Not too careful though, you just kind of want them to lay where they're going to lay. Everybody, everybody's going to come out with their own little version of space. And that's the best part, right? So. What is meant to happen will happen. Yeah, yep, yep. I'll take a stand that holds six. <laughs> Neodymium magnets are good. Yeah, that's what these are. Um, there were no kid sizes. Yeah, not this, not this go around. I can't, um, I can't, um, I can't guarantee that I'll be able to get all the sizes in kids if I offered it. And it just adds on to right now. It just. Yeah, it would just add on more to, to, you know, this whole procedure. It's my first kind of go around, so I'm not ruling it out for, like, the next. If we ever do another one, like another t-shirt is exclusive or something like that. Um, but, you know, I just, I couldn't swing it. Somebody also asked for hoodies, and I looked into the hoodies. And, uh, yeah, without placing, like, a bulk order up front for them, um... The, the, they would just be so, you know, outrageously priced, basically, that it just w doesn't make any sense. Because um, I, I want you to have something that's, like, worth its value, right? And uh, I feel like you could go and get a nice jacket, like a really nice coat or something, um, for the same price we'd be charging for a regular-ass plain Jane hoodie just because it's different material and it's yeah and quality hoodies were just so expensive outright and then getting the print done on them it would just yeah it would have been a Versace hoodie believe me <laughs> but uh yeah I feel you man um I definitely wanted to get Violet the shirt too but I don't think I'm gonna be able to um if we ever bring the design back, uh, definitely we'll, we'll make sure to have kids shirts on the next round, but, you know, just wasn't possible this time around. Alright, so we kind of muddied up the colors in the back. You kind of see you have some colors still kind of showing. They look a lot brighter on the monitor than they do in prison, but, um kind of all you need right the stars are going to shine on this and that's what we want this is going to be like the far out distance stuff right so here i'm going to give you guys a couple quick little tips on how you can achieve some stars quickly and easily so here again i'm going to take the revolution see how i was just talking about it could spray nicer thicker paint and stuff this is kind of one of those things you could do with the revolution uh, because of its needle size, so I'm gonna make sure to clean it up real quick. Just rinse it out. He would want one once he sees it. That's cool, but yeah, it just it would just add too much to the the whole thing right now. Yeah, already, like, uh, with the shirts, you know, it's... <laughs> you guys are, like, I just gotta say, you guys are freaking awesome. You guys are awesome. You guys completely blew away my expectations of what I thought, how many people were gonna order something. And, uh, yeah. I'm just gonna say you guys are pretty awesome. Alright, so I'm gonna turn my pressure up a little bit. Right, and what I've done on the revolution is just take off the cap, boom, just completely exposing the nozzle. Be careful when you have it at this point. I'm gonna take a little bit of the opaque white, just a little bit, put it in there. Now, what we're gonna do is pull back as far as you can on this trigger. And uh, should, I don't know if I just can't see it because it has a white rag, but, oh, there you go. 
So all we're going to do is pull back on the trigger all the way. And uh, I think we need more pressure here. Give me the pressure. There you go. So just pulling back on the trigger and you can see it's going to spray some dots. I think we need more pressure. But I don't have enough pressure set at the main, the main compressor. So hold on, let me let me go up to pressure real quick. So it's like it's only giving me 30, which is what I said it at. Alrighty. You have more pressure now? One thing I'm going to do too is maybe reduce this a little bit, just a tad bit. It's kind of thick. It's not really flow. It's not flowing the way I would want it to. This is probably the worst, the hardest and worst way to do this, but I am going to show you a couple ways. I just want to make sure to demonstrate this way for you. All right, so with the cap off, the pressure up a little bit higher, I'm talking about like 40 psi. We're gonna want to pull back all the way on that, and there you go. If you get it, pull it back a few times, and you get some stars. Bam! Right, just pulling back. I'm using I'm using the, the obviously this needle cut out and just pulling back on the whole thing like this. So that's one way get some different stars. I like this way that it gives you like different random stars and it gives you some bigger ones, right? But we're gonna color over those, so don't worry too much about it. I'm gonna put our cap back on. That's way number one. Way number two. Leave the cap on. Then we turn the pressure back down to like 30. And I guess we'll just make one. So we're going to take a piece of paper, our nice thick paper, right? We're going to take it out of here. All right, you're going to fold this hot dog style. Now you know what hot dog style is. This, bang. We're gonna lay our airbrush right within that hot dog. And we're gonna tilt it kind of like 45 to 60 degrees. You'll be able to play with it once you see. And then you're gonna pull back on that trigger right against that paper there. Right, and that gives you more stars. It's a little bit easier way, depending on your airbrush, how much pressure you have available. And I'll demonstrate one last way. Oh yeah, way, oh yeah, way, 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 oh yeah, way. Um, <laughs> and I thought I had brought out a um, a disposable fork. So the last way is to take a disposable fork, you know, the little plastic forks, just get a, tap the little fork ends into the airbrush, into the white, and then just flick, flick it. Just flick the little fork onto your panel and it'll give you stars as well. That's another one, people. Anyway, we got it up to this point. We're gonna switch back off to the blue. Remember the blue? Right, we have black and white loaded. We're gonna switch back off into the blue. Turn our air pressure back down. Uh, you can see it coming live. Can you bounce paint off of something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will like it, Tim. Just don't want to miss nothing. <laughs> right on D. Thank you, thank you, sir. 
Toothbrush would work like that. Yeah, I've seen people use a toothbrush or a big, a big like cleaning brush. I've seen those work really good. If you need to get like a big area done, use those big brushes, and uh, those will give you good too. But all we're gonna do is go right over these stars, and we're gonna use the blue. And I want to build up this blue nebula more than all the other ones. All right, so I'm just coming in with a squiggly line right over the stars. Fading it in, and what I like is when you just kind of blend it in, it goes over some of them stars, kind of shifts the color on the stars, makes them look blue, obviously. Right, and then we're gonna have that kind of go all the way across to the other side. And then we have a little bit of blue up in here. Yeah, and you just want to use those colors out in space to just kind of highlight some areas. Let me bring some around over here. And just just that one going across. We don't want to do too many too much on all the other ones. Kind of leave those far back. That's okay. And actually, what we could do in order to layer our stars even a little bit more. So we're going to switch off back to the black, right? And we're going to dim some of these down. So we're just going to go back in with the black and just kind of hit those, right? And you'll see them, they start to kind of just fade off into the background. You know, some stars will be farther away, less bright. Some stars will be closer, you know, brighter. Some stars are bigger, some stars are smaller. Just like everybody's gonna have their own little space scene, every star is gonna have its own little variations, intricacies. Some are gonna be really big and bright, some are gonna be really small and bright, some are gonna be really big and dull, some are gonna be really big and bright. You know. Mmm, this cornbread, amazing. Oh, you suck, you're not gonna bring me none? I see how you are. All right, so we're gonna do round number two of stars with our little hot dog here. Right, I feel like this was given the best variation. Bam. And you'll see right away when you lay the, the new stars over the old stars, you need a little more pressure. Ugh. There you go. Go back in with just a little bit of black. We still don't want any any super bright areas. Maybe we want to just clean up some areas. Maybe there's some dark spots in space over here. Ooh, I know. Here, here's a good one we could do. See this one right here that's dripping? We're gonna we're gonna just let that dry up. We're gonna stop it there. All right, we're gonna let it dry up. We got a good idea for this one though. We're gonna turn it into something. Don't, don't get discouraged if something like that happens. It's always, in the space scene, it's always good. But here's a good idea we're gonna do. See, remember our cutouts? Maybe we're gonna take that little cutout, and we're gonna put it up here. Maybe there's just like a hidden planet right there, like a black hole kind of, it's just sitting in the shadows there. Not. Not by any star, not by anything. Just kind of sitting out there on its own. All right. Switch off to the white one last time. And then we're gonna attack our nebula edge here. Gonna just kind of build it in nice and easy. Nice and soft. So even space has its layers, right? Man. Not too crazy. Then maybe we want to make an eclipse. You see this planet here? Maybe we want to make it look like the sun is just right behind it over there. So we'll add a, a nice bright spot just right off the edge. And then we'll bring a couple of dagger strokes coming out. Just like that. Look at that. 
Right? And it's just like the sun's about to peek out right from up behind that star there. Right? Damn. Nothing too crazy. Then we're at the point we can remove our planets. Right? Our stencils for our planets. And these magnets are. Oh boy! They're strong as hell. Right? Boom! There you have planet number one chilling. Take this one off. Boom, planet number two, chilling. Now, obviously, you could leave them like that. What I like to do is just come back in with a little bit of black. We're gonna give them shape. So you see how this one has the light source already on that side? So maybe this side over here is the dark side of the planet. So you wanna just shade in around. Look at that. See how that changes it so much? And you wanna leave just a little bit of that bright spot on the other side because space is still lighting it over here. There, all these other stars are just still casting sh like a light on this side. Same thing over here. Maybe you want to go on this side over here. Damn. Nothing too crazy right there. Just simple stuff. And you got a nice space background. That simple. Right? So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove my whale. If I can get these magnets off. And I'm going to finish cutting it first. All right? Because like I said, I didn't cut it all the way. So take all these off. And remove the whale. Boom. You should have a nice clean outline of the whale. All right? It almost looks white on the video. So... Cornbread with butter and syrup. Yo, you guys, you guys are messing up right now, man. <laughs> I already had dinner, but cornbread sounds so good. So I'm going to cut this out, right? I'm going to just follow the lines here. I can still see them. Um, we're just going to cut that out real quick. Nothing too crazy. <clears throat> Babe, if you're watching, you should bring me some of this cornbread. All right, so all I did is cut off the part where the black goes. All right, we're gonna go ahead and magnet that in place. We'll just put a few so it doesn't really get all messed up on us. We're gonna bring back our cutout, right? And now we don't wanna get overspray on space. Right? We want space to be protected. We want to be Space Force. So we're going to protect space by re-adding our cutout around the edge of the whale. cold in here.
Some poor man's pasta? Ramen? Yo. Don't be talking smack about ramen, bro. Because you've never lived life until you had to... That ramen was your friend. I'll tell you what. I've been there. I know a lot of my friends have been there. And uh, life is fun that way. You know what I'm saying? Not all of us can have steak and cornbread every night. Anyway, guys. <laughs> Getting hungry with all this food talk. Yo, cornbread is so good. So yeah, I feel your pain. I like me some ramen with some Valentina hot sauce or some Louisiana hot sauce. Boy, I tear me up some ramen. Still to this day, me and my wife just like having ramen as a meal. <laughs> we don't even have to be broke or nothing. We just like, oh, you want ramen? Yeah, let's let's make some ramen. <laughs> and we're talking about like the. The ramen ramen and like the 50 cents a pack from Walmart ramen. That's what we choose to eat as individuals. Alright, so I'm gonna take some white and we're just gonna carefully fill in these spots. Nothing too crazy here, just nice and easy. You don't wanna hit it too hard, just build up your white. It's better to build it up than to try to drown it right away. So build it up in nice, slight strokes. And if you want to get like uh, technical with it, you could kind of create some shading at this point. Though I do believe it'll be a lot easier to do with the black than trying to get in shades with the white right now. It also help it get more pop and more shape to it. So, ramen will teach you creative cooking. Yes, 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 yes. Ramen gets people through bad times. Yeah, that's all it is, man. That stomach be rumbling, and ramen comes a tumbling. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? If you know what I'm saying, you've had ramen. Yeah. So yeah, don't don't uh, you know. Don't ever think life is not luxurious just because you're not having the best stuff. Because even some like me, I st like, yeah, life is not as luxurious as you think. <laughs> Bam, look at that. It almost looks cool just like that. But we're not gonna leave it like that, no sir. No sir, no way. So just make sure to shift my magnets around so we can make sure to get all this. All right, so we're gonna get our cutouts that we cut out of the white, right? We're gonna have to stick these back on. So I actually need to add these magnet links back into the links. I know you guys are going to ask, how did you get that many magnets? And I'll be like, it was all one pack. It was all one pack of magnets. Bam. And so I kind of, if you guys remember watching uh, earlier in the year when I painted the panel for Gerald Mendez, this isn't the exact whale, but this is pretty much the same way I went about doing it, so. Dunk! These, these magnets are... These magnets are strong, son. I'm having cornbread with butter right now. I don't, I don't like syrup. I'm not a really a syrup per person, but ice cream and Swiss rolls. What the hell? In a bowl of ice cream? What? How does ramen lead you to Swiss rolls? 
I like to put chunks of real chicken or meat in with my ramen. Dang, that's fancy ramen. Oh, Namless with the fancy ramen. I see you. Stomach rumbles. <laughs> Eggs, huh? Mmm. All right, I'm going to switch back off to the black here. <clears throat> and now, here's where you have an, abi uh, an ability. <laughs> Um, an opportunity to add some dimension. So we're going to go right off the, you see this curve here? We're going to go with the same stencil we cut out. Maybe we use the back end. Right behind there. And we're just going to go right across there. Nice and light. And shade that going up. You notice I'm not going along the edge. I'm kind of leaving a little bit of space. Just a little bit of space on that side. But I'm going to make sure to hit all the way to the back side. And we kind of Kind of just building up that edge right there. It's, it's gray. Hey, look at me. That edge right there is gray. You see that? <laughs> so we're going to use that, right? Same thing here. Maybe we want to hit the, the bottom of the mouth, like right where it connects. We want to hit that in nice and hard. But then we want to bring in like kind of a soft shadow across the top. Right? You don't have to, again, like you don't have to just take in black. Kind of go in nice and softly and just bring it in. Now, let me sneeze. <laughs> oh man. Oh. Oh. Ice cream was with Swiss cake rolls. I've never had that. It sounds good though. And something quick. Mmm. <laughs> So again, I'm gonna hit this bottom edge against the white, like nice and hard, and then I'm gonna kind of shade it going up and try to simulate around. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and just hit one quick shade right along the edge, just following the curve of the whale. All right? Not a hard shadow, just a nice soft shade following the curve of the whale. You notice there's still gray on the edges here. The, if you're using a white background, um, you're gonna have you know white. So maybe just go in a little bit and just gray it up a little bit. You don't have to. On the white, maybe black would look a lot better if it's just straight up black. But then I'm gonna hit the hard edge on all this bottom, right? And then I'm gonna just shade that up. So going up, I'm just gonna shade it up. I don't know how well that translates to on camera, but you can see that the whale kind of has like a, a curve here. Like there's, it's sticking out. It's like, you know, this is sticking out this way. It's not just a black whale, like just flat. You know, it has a nice shape to it. Damn. And make sure to hit all the way down to the fin. Simple, simple, simple things. Now we're gonna remove our white again. Move our magnets for our white pieces. We can peel those off now. stuck on there, what? I don't know. Got like a piece of fuzz or something on there. It's okay. We'll touch that up. Again, using the same curvature that we cut out for the top. I'm gonna come back in with a little black right off here on the fin. And we're just gonna create a little shadow there. Just a little shadow. 
little too, just slightly. See that? Bam, that throws that fin to the back. And I'm just gonna go along this bottom edge. Just really lightly. And that hit our edge of our whale. Now this edge of the whale is not usually this actually this sharp. So if you feel like you have the skill set and you can do fine, nice fine details, you can come in here and just kind of add in some some black spots to kind of give it more of a blended in or a more realistic kind of look to the whale. It doesn't have to be nothing too crazy fancy, nothing like that. Just quick little areas. And then we're going to do the eye. It's the black eye. Boom. Boom. A little bit of shade right here. Nothing too crazy. And that's pretty much it for the whale. We can collect our magnets. Now we have our whale in space, right? But like I said when we started, we weren't just going to just finish there. We're going to add our galaxy kind of where he's jumping out of here. So if you remember back at the beginning, I left the blue loaded. And we still have the blue loaded. What does cornbread taste like? Cornbread tastes like never had it. What? What? <laughs> what? No, what? Yo, it's so delicious. You don't have cornbread? You guys have corn, right? Yeah, the one I just had was nice and fluffy. Like, when it's just fresh out of the oven, you spread some butter on the top. <laughs> That's wild, man. Never had cornbread. Right, so that looks pretty good right there. We're going to continue on. So right here at the bottom, I want to just kind of just make a ring. Nothing too crazy. And I'm just going to kind of bring it around. And then we're going to make the like the trailing offs of the galaxy, you know? Just going out into space. And because we're using the opaques, you go right over that whale. No problem. And we'll bring out some, some specks out here. Boom. We're not completely done with our space. Now we're gonna add, we're gonna blend in the whale into the space, right? So we wanna make sure it's all together. All right, so then coming off the whale, now you can use your cutouts, right, if you want, or you can just come in and we're gonna make it look like some, some space water. It's kind of dripping off the whale where he jumped out, right? So we're gonna, Fill that in. Just using a little bit of the blue to start. Bring it in, just kind of like it's dragging down. Maybe some of it's kind of running around onto him. Boom. Nothing too crazy here. We're gonna switch to our white. And we're just gonna re-emphasize what we just did. All right, first off, we're gonna kind of hit a little freehand edge on that whale there. We're going to build up the center of the galaxy here and the whale jumping out. I right, use that same ring and just bring in some nice little textures, some nice little dots. All I'm doing is just making moving dots. Moving dots. All I'm doing is moving dots. It's the best way to describe it is moving dots. I'm just moving and just doing dots. If you practice dots, you should know what I'm saying. And I 
have lots of exercises where I tell you to practice your dots. Here's where they come in handy. Use those dots and just move your airbrush and just keep making those dots. Bam. And build up your galaxy just kind of going off. Now remember that, that white spot? We're gonna go ahead and fill that in right there. Boom, right, nice and bright spot. And then we're gonna bring some dagger strokes. Boom, just coming right off of there. Boom, what is that right there? We got a comet coming up across our galaxy here. You know what, we want another one up here. You see this bright dot right here? We're gonna just come in, fuzz it out a little bit, and just bring some dagger strokes right off of it. Bam, we got another comet coming going that way. Now we want to be hand selective with some of our stars here. Maybe we want to come in and brighten some of them up. Maybe you just want some to stick out. So you pick some, and then you brighten them and you fuzz them, right? And once you fuzz them like that, it really makes them stick out. Like you can really pinpoint out the ones where it just looks like they're like gleaming at you. You know, it's just like, when you're looking up at the sky, sometimes they look like they're flickering, you know? This is like you captured those flickers on, on a painting. And then we come into our water here. Extend our trailings of our water kind of coming down, moving dots. And just moving dots in a direction makes flow. So if you do those moving dots and you do them all in one direction, it makes it look like there's a flow, there's motion. So all we're doing is moving dots. Moving dots. And we want to add some splash on the other side. And again, just moving dots. A little bit of a stroke here and there. A little bit of a line. Nothing too, too wild. Get creative, but just make sure you stay in nice and tight. Just a little bit of moving dots, a little bit of lines, and you'll create a flow with some motion, some crashing patterns. It looks like it's jumping out. Right. Then we're gonna come back in here. We're gonna give it one nice little shadow across the top here. Maybe we want a nice little highlight. And adding a freehand highlight as opposed to a sharp one with a stencil creates more of a glow so it looks like this, this light is just kind of shining and, and refracting more in a glow as opposed to just a nice thick um, with a with a nice sharp one it's kind of more of a uh, refraction like glass or something like that so sometimes a nice soft edge is all you need to create like that illusion that it's glowing it's something is shining on it yeah. Not too crazy right there. Now maybe here on his uh, on his fin, we just want the light, same like it's doing over here. We could just have a light that's just kind of just right behind that fin. We bring off some dagger strokes, just brighten it up a little bit right there. Bam! Look at that. Now we have our whale jumping out of space. Now something I see right here on this planet is maybe we want to add some clouds. Right, we just bring in some nice little white clouds here. Kind of going that way. Bring them all the way up into the black. Right all the way back. Bam. And there you go. You can keep getting creative with it. You can use different colors. Obviously I like using a little bit of blue because we're doing the water, but if, you, if you're doing a different animal or something like that, you don't want water, maybe you want your water to be purple, pink, whatever it is, you're free to have fun with it right there. That teaches you the basic skills you need to get this base, you know, this exercise kind of finished and done. Um, you guys, you know, can go back, add more detail onto the whale, obviously, if you want to add more 
reflections, more shadows, more definition. If you want to add more onto the planet, maybe more planets, maybe a different galaxy over here. Like I said, everybody's version of space is going to be a little bit different. I'm just show, here to show you how to get there. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Hopefully you guys enjoy that video. I'm going to go ahead and take another look at the chat here. While you guys take a good look at the painting, I'll get you guys nice and focused in. And yeah, I like really, I like space scenes a lot. I like doing this. Um, so yeah, Vegemite, no, 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 no. Why are you painting a dead whale? <laughs> Would you put a candy over it? Um, that's a good question. I don't know um, if the project called for it. I, t I like it like this, but I mean, if you put a candy over it, all it's going to be is like the same shade of, you know, different shades of blue or, or red or whatever. It's um, It really loses some of the effect, especially like the colors. Um, if, if you throw candy over it, you know, you lose all those colors. Um, a space suit with water inside. <laughs> hey, a, a little astronaut would be kind of dope if he was just over here hanging out. Hey, but I'll leave you that guy... I'll leave that up to you guys. If you guys want to tag me on social media, let me know how your version came out. Um, by all means, go ahead and do so. You know, it's at Mike's Brush. Just tag us, and uh, I'll go ahead and check it out. And I'd, I'd love to see you guys' results. So, Yeah. So hopefully that helps some of you guys out. I know uh, a lot of people like doing the space scenes. I like doing animals, um, different kinds of animals and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, whales are kind of one of the most interesting animals out there. Uh, so I really like it. I, I still like, space is still like one of those things. If, if in my life, lifetime it's cheap enough to go to space, I'll definitely just go to space. I don't care if I die. I just want to see it. Like, I want to see it from my own eyes. Not on video, like I want to see. Um, that would be so amazing. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. Maybe clear coat it? Yeah, yeah. So this this metal panel is going to get clear coated. That's kind of why I did it on metal because I'm going to be spraying some clear. So it's a perfect time to get a couple panels together. Um, and uh, yeah, I got Chris's, <laughs> Chris's tumbler is still waiting for clear. So I'm going to be clearing that up too. Um, with all this food talk, got to go feed my face. Yeah, yeah, go get, go get some grub. Provecho, provecho, señor. Coma muy bien. Uh, another magic trick for Magic Mike. Looks badass. That's magnificent. Right on. Thank, thank you all for coming in today, hanging out. As always, thank you guys for all the support. Um, uh, oh, one last thing before I go. I should probably uh, post it before I forget. Is um, here. I'll get it for you. I'll get it for you. So there's, uh, I think, nine days now. Nine days left to get your airbrush uh, Skull Squad. Why did I say airbrush? To get your Skull Squad shirt um, reserved. Uh, there's about, I think it was 25 last I checked, um, of you guys that placed an order. So thank you guys again. You guys have been super amazing. I just, I never thought so many of you guys would actually want one, but that was super dope. Um, but yeah, if you if you enjoy these videos and stuff like that, um, definitely getting one of those shirts is a, a way of support. Showing your support because it doesn't actually support the channel. You get a nice shirt, the channel doesn't get much out of it. But it's a way of showing your support and letting people know that you believe in the Skull Squad. Um, as also as if you like some nice stencils, you can go and check the stencils out there on the website as well. Those do help support the channel a lot. So uh, if you've ordered a stencil as well. Um, thank you guys so much. I know a lot of you guys ordered a shirt and then just added on some stencils onto your order, which was really cool. Um, but yeah, I'm always so humbled by you guys' response. I didn't expect all that. Um, but yeah, there's only nine days left. If you want one of the shirts, go and check it out in that, in that link in the chat. And uh, yeah, like I said in the beginning, the link to this image is down in the description. You can download this image in that same link. There's a link to all of the other images 
that we've done in the hotter airbrush live streams there's lots of images lots of free stencils lots of free exercises for you to try out at home if you're new around here i highly recommend you go and check those out because you're going to see some stuff on there that you're like what he did that and be like yeah and then you just go and type in the youtube search it's going to come up you're going to see me probably a little bit younger looking a little bit better looking and then you're going to be like wow this guy's been doing it forever yes i have and uh, i hope you guys enjoy it i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here go get some more of this cornbread I'm going to figure out a way to send Stephen Ward some cornbread because I, I just, he completely blew my mind. And uh, yeah, every man deserves some cornbread for sure. I thought they had corn in Australia. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys again for all the support. I hope you guys like this video. Share it out. It really helps a lot. Um, and yeah, we, got, we still have quite a few of these videos this month coming to you guys. All this month is how to airbrush live streams. There's going to be a few videos mixed in in between, but all the live streams will be how to airbrush videos. We have a giveaway coming up. And the only thing I can say about the giveaway at this very point in time is that it's the giveaway with the most sponsors we've ever had. And it's all thanks to you guys. You guys out there, yo, you guys really make it all possible. And uh, I just really, like, you guys are awesome. And, like, not just me, but obviously all these companies want to figure out a way to give back to you guys. And that's what we're doing. It's going to be free. Free. The only limitation on it, because of shipping right now and the whole still the virus and everything, is that you have to be in the United States. So, I know, Stephen Ward, I'm completely sorry, but I will figure out a way to send you some cornbread. I promise. But... If you live in the U.S. In the, in the lower 48 states, um, you will be qualified to enter. You, you can enter for free, and uh, yeah, just it's all I can say. The most sponsors I've had for a giveaway ever, so it's a little bit crazy, a little bit wild, but it's gonna be awesome. And yeah, I hope you guys are all ready. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys again for all the support, not just today, but through all of the years. Hope you guys are having a good December. And we'll see you on the next one.